Hi, this is Mr. Moss, and in this video, we're going to be doing an introduction to decimals. We've been learning a lot about fractions, and today we're going to take the opportunity to talk about how decimals can work. One of the things that we've learned about fractions is you can have the whole be broken up into really any different amount. I can have the whole broken up into two parts, like in one half. I can have the whole broken up into three parts. Uh, like if I have three-thirds, I can have the whole broken up into seven parts. If I have five-sevenths or 29 parts, if I have three 29ths, however, I end up breaking up the whole. That's how I can do it. Decimals, however, can only be broken up into certain parts. The whole, I should say, can only be broken up into certain parts. And to visualize this, I want to take a look at some familiar manipulatives, some familiar tools that we use. We have the cube. We have the long, and we have the flat. And historically, a cube has been worth 1. A long has been worth 10, of course, because we can count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 cubes make up a long. And then the flat has been worth 100 because it's a 10 by 10 grid with 100 parts in all. But in the world of decimals, all of that changes. In the world of decimals, instead of having 1, 10, and 100, we're now going to imagine it as if this flat here, well, let's think of it. How many flats am I holding in my hand right now? I'm holding 1. So this flat here is worth 1 whole. That's going to be my whole. And then in order to fill up, fill in, I should say, this flat, I can use a bunch of different lungs. And let's think about how many lungs it would take to fill this up. I can make it with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's get that last one up here. 10. So 10 of these longs makes the equivalent of one flat. So if it takes 10 of these to equal that one flat, then one of these is worth one tenth of that. Right? That's one tenth of my whole. Well, in the world of decimals, we write that as 0 0.1. And I'll explain more about that in just a moment. Now, what about this individual cube right here. I know that it could take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 of those to equal 1 long. And if I know that it's going to take 10 longs to equal this entire whole, then that tells me that I'm going to need 100 of these little cubes to fill up my whole, my 1. So in this case, each cube is going to be worth 1 hundredth, or in decimals, that's 0 0.01. Let's talk more about how and why that works. So if I move this out of the way, we do a lot of work in class with how to make a place value chart. And historically in school, kids are familiar with a few different place values. They're familiar with the ones place, the tens place, the hundreds place, the one thousands place, the ten thousands, the hundred thousand, and the one millions place. And that's how far we typically cover in fourth grade. Well, what we're introducing is saying, historically, the smallest place value that the kids have worked with has been the ones place. So the number six is worth six ones. The number 42 is worth four tens and two ones. The number 6,579 is six thousands, five hundreds, seven tens, and nine ones. And we typically think of the one space as where this place value chart ends. It's the smallest place value. But in fact, 
that's not true. And now we're starting to learn that there are even smaller place values. We get the tenths place. And it's important to remember that it's ending with THS. That's the difference between tens and tenths is the tenths place. It takes 10 of those to equal one whole. And then we get the hundredths place. I'm not sure if I'm going to fit this all in here. H-U-N-D-R-E-D-T-H-S. All decimals end with that THS place. And where that's helpful is I can say, for example, that if I've got one-tenth right here. I know 10 of these make a whole, so that's 0 0.1. If I have one hundredth, I know it's going to take 100 of these to make a whole. That's going to be 0 0.01. There's a lot going, oops, there's a lot going on right now on this place value chart. So when we're working with decimals, typically we focus in just on ones, tenths, and hundredths. So let's take a look at different ways in which we can think about ones, tenths, and hundredths. So first of all, right now, we're not worrying about having a particular amount in my ones place. So I'm just going to put a zero right over here along with my decimal point. The question is, how many tenths and how many hundredths do I have? So I'm actually going to get a pencil so that I can do this with you. All right, I'm back. So one thing I forgot to bring over here. So let's talk about different ways to imagine these different amounts. I'm going to hop over for a second here, and we're going to actually go and look at different ways to represent amounts. So here's an example of a base 10 uh, flat. It's 10 by 10, so 100 different squares. If I shaded in only three of these, those three squares right there are showing me that I haven't filled in an entire column. Another way to imagine that is if I broke it up into tenths, I don't have an entire column here filled in. So I know, see how I can represent it as one whole column, one long? I don't have a whole long filled in right there. So I don't have any tenths. That's going to be a zero. I do, however, have three individual cubes shaded in. So that's going to represent, in this case, one hundredth. I'm sorry, three hundredths, because I've got these three shapes shaded in, those three squares. So that's three hundredths, 0 0.03, which I read as zero and zero three hundredths. We talk a lot about how do you spell a decimal versus how do you read it. Just like when I say, how do you spell the word apple? I say, a-P-P-L-E, but I don't say to somebody, hey, could you please bring me an A-P-P-L-E? No, I use the word apple. Likewise, I might spell this decimal or write this decimal 0 0.03, but I don't read it as 0 0.03. I read this as 0 and, I always say and when I come to the decimal point, 0 and 3 hundredths. Now let's go back and look at another way in which I could do this. I'm going to now change what I'm shading in. And instead, I'm going to shade in these two columns. And let's shade in one, two, three, four, five more cubes. So in this case, let's go back to our place value chart. Let me erase what we had here before. Probably should have done this on a dry erase board. Oh, well. So in this case, if I go and I look back, boy, I had two whole longs shaded in. It would be like the equivalent of saying that I've shaded in one, two columns. So that's going to show me that I've got two tenths. And then on top of that, I have shaded in one, two, three, four, five individual cubes. 
So that's showing me five hundredths. Another way to represent that is by saying, here's my two tenths, and then my one, two, three, four, five hundredths. Zero and 25 hundredths. Now what's pretty cool about this is I can look at this in a few different ways. I can either say that this is two tenths and then just these five more hundredths right here. One, two, three, four, five. I can read this as two tenths and five hundredths, or I can just call this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. I can call this either two tenths and five hundredths, or I can just call this 25 hundredths. They're equivalents, different ways to look at the same amount. It would be like me taking this and saying, if this is my whole, I can either represent this by putting down two longs, here and one, two, three, they're not fitting right, but bear with me, for five individual cubes. That's showing me 25 hundredths. Or I could just put down 25 individual cubes, however many that is here, 25 individual cubes to fill this in. Either way, I'm going to have 25 hundredths. Whether I make that 20 using the two tens, tenths, I should say, or if I make it using 20 individual cubes, that's up to me, but it means the same amount. Let's go back and do a few more examples here. Let's erase what we have here. All right, so let's say I shade in and I keep going. Oops, well, let's just go with that. So here I've got one, two, three, four columns shaded in, four longs, and then I've got one, two, three, four cubes here. So I can represent that as four tenths and four more hundredths because I've got four columns, one, two, three, four, and then four individual cubes, one, two, three, four. So I can write that as 0 0.44, or I can read that as 0 and 44 hundredths. You would never really read this as 0 and 4 tenths and 4 hundredths. It wouldn't make sense. You'd read this as 44 hundredths. And again, I could represent that as 4 tenths and 4 hundredths, or I could break all of these longs, these four longs, into 40 individual cubes and say I have 44, put them all down right here, 44 hundredths. Whether that's four tenths and four hundredths or a big pile of 44 hundredths cubes, either way it's going to mean the same amount. One way in which I like to think about that, because decimals are pretty new for a lot of us, is to imagine it in terms of money. So if I have 0 0.44, 44 hundredths, I like to think of tenths as representing dimes. And I like to think of hundredths as representing pennies. And so a good way to think about it is if I'm trying to make, let's put a dollar sign here. Again, money is a lot more familiar to us. If I like to think of 44 cents, well, I can make that in two ways. We're forgetting about quarters and nickels for a minute here. We're just going to work with dimes and pennies. I could either make that using four dimes, because that's four groups of 10 cents, and then four more pennies, or I could just make 44 pennies. If I'm going one cent at a time, that's if I was counting by 0 0.01, if I was counting by hundredths, versus if I was counting by tenths. And another way to imagine that, one tenth is the same as 10 hundredths. Let's look at why that works, by the way. One tenth versus 10 hundredths. Let's clear this. And right here, I'm showing you, this is a tenth. Because imagine 10 longs on this board going up and down, going across the whole thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, et cetera, going across. 
That's one of those 10 pieces. But I can also look at this as 100 little individual squares. That's what we're seeing right here. And in that case, I've got not just one tenth, I've got 10 hundredths. So again, we can imagine that on a place value chart as me either calling this one tenth right here, 0 0.1 one tenth, or 10 hundredths, which makes sense. We all know with place value charts, I've got a zero here. I haven't changed my quantity, whether that's one tenth or 10 hundredths, it's the same amount. So just to look at a few other quick examples here, 0 0.54, I can represent that by shading in one, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, four individual hundredths. So there are a lot of different ways in which we can work with decimals. My phone is ringing, so I'm going to take my leave of you. This has been Mr. Moss working with decimals, and I hope this was a helpful guide for you. Have a great day.